Hey, this is Max. Welcome back to another CSR2 video. I'm here looking at the race pass rewards. Uh, if you paid for the pass, you can pick from one of these three cars. So which one should you pick? Well, assuming you're getting these cars for live racing, I'm going to give you my view on this and my take on which car to go for. Out of the three, the one I can tell you to definitely not go for is the Lamborghini, mainly because it's kind of outdated at this point. Despite it being a dyno beating car, a it simply doesn't carry enough EVO at any level of upgrades that is competitive uh, compared to most others. Although the Spider-Man is still relatively competitive because it carries a higher EVO, uh, that LB Aventador, which is actually this one right here, um, this one simply does not carry as much EVO. And therefore, despite its dyno beating capabilities, it's not a very easy car to use in live anymore and not very competitive. So that's the limited edition of Ventador Coupe. Out of the three, I would cross that off the list first. The 935 Martini Racing is a carbon copy of the 935 Salzburg or vice versa, depending on how you want to look at it. I have this set up in a um, lobby for a dyno of 9.658. And this car actually turned out quite decent. Um, much like the Bolide, it doesn't have the crazy high EVO some of these new cars would carry at lower upgrades, but at a median level upgrade of 666, it actually carries pretty decent EVO and therefore is competitive in the lobby that it falls in, which with a 9.6 type dyno, you tend to fall into the 9.9, 9.8 lobby. However, in the 9.8 lobby, cars like this, if it's set up properly, can do 9.5s, 9.4s. So you need to be careful who you really push against. Um, and the car's a little tricky to launch. In this case, I got a 0 RPM launch, which really kills my run. But that's okay, because I actually wanted to just not push the car too much on the first run. Let me see where I am here. I'm going to re-challenge him and hopefully don't botch the run. He slowed down a lot. I saw that. So he knows his car is uh, set up pretty well in here. So I'm going to push him this time again. I don't expect to win because, again, the Salzburg, as good as it is, isn't as good as the F5 concept. But the F5, uh, F5 concept isn't as good as, say, the new Venom F5. So, you know, there's a hierarchy of what's kind of good out there and what could be bad. It really depends on how you want to push your car. I'm going to just keep going because he's going pretty fast. Uh, like I said, he can run 9.4s in here pretty easily, 9.3s, but by doing so, I know he's well beyond the lobby range. And he just did one slow run, one fast run. He's probably going to stick around a little bit longer. Irrelevant to my purposes, most of the time, those are the guys you know better to, than to race. But if they like to push their car like that, it's okay. Sooner or later, they'll leave the lobby and you'll still be here. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to get a better run in. Okay, so this guy is a Lexus, which generally is pretty competitive in here. He's going to start catching up near the end here, but I can slow down slightly and still push past them. This is a normal opponent in the lobby, 9.8, 9.792. So again, my dyno is 9.6s. I can run the dyno, which is 9.6s. Uh, so the car, again, is OK. Now, I've been actually racing this car quite a lot, so I've been pushing it a bit. Realistically, if I just run it slow for a bit in the beginning, I can end up in the 9.8, 9.9 lobby, where you can have a much greater margin of um, ability to slow down and still win. Right now, I'm kind of pushing it because this lobby is a little bit faster, but that could be a result of me racing it hard earlier. So again, I'm watching the car coming up. Okay, this one, um, probably a 9.8 something run. He's got a 9.892, I got 9.793. Again, that's almost a 9.9 .9 run from the NSX. And he, he thinks that he can run better than my 9.7. Okay, might be a 9.6 car. He might be a fully maxed in SXR. They're a little hard to get the best run out of sometimes. So we'll see. But again, I'm already 
looking at this car and realizing that I might have overdone it a little bit in the recent races. So I have to be careful to control it and not push it out of the lobby. Um, and here I can slow down low extra, still win. Let's see what we got there. 9.86, 9.9. Okay. So a pretty competitive car. Uh, not the perfect live racer by any means. There are just better cars out there now and quite a few of them. But out of the three options, it's certainly a viable live racer. So that's the 935 Salzburg slash Martini racing. Uh, that's just a livery difference. Let's go ahead and look at the Bolide. Out of the three, now that you've seen where the Martini um, falls, let's show you where the Bolide falls. So the Martini racing was a 9.6 dyno, um, but obviously it has a little bit of a faster dyno because it is upgraded a little differently. I'll, I'll show you in a second. Um, that car is uh, basically 6661111 on the setup. This car is 63623. Okay, so it's definitely slower. It's not going to be as quick as the um, Martini Racing because you're missing a few parts, but it kind of falls in a one lobby down. It does a 9.846 dyno. Let me show you the tune. So, okay, so here's the tune. Falls in a 9.846 dyno. And it will mostly face cars that will run 9.9s, 10s, 10.1s. Versus the other car, which is a 9.6 dyno, but it runs cars that are doing like 9.8, 9.7, 9.9. You basically got one lobby advantage either way. With the level of upgrades you have at the performance point level of 665 to 667, that one lobby is all you're really going to get, especially against all these cars that also carry some lobby advantage. Every one of the cars in here except maybe these beginner Supras, will carry lobby advantage. Um, so it's it's like advantage versus advantage. It's like who's got more um, and can run a little faster is th the real key here. If I race one of these Supras, it'll give you a better idea what the actual lobby uh, time is because these guys are not going to have advantage. But uh, unfortunately, nobody is available. We'll jump out and back in, see if we can get somebody. And then we'll wrap up the video because it's getting kind of long. Okay, as you can see, I'm pretty locked in this uh, lobby here with the tune. I've been racing this car quite a bit uh, in the last two days to test it. So I can tell you it's pretty well set for these lobbies. Let's see if this guy will race me or not. He may not. Okay. All right. Well, wait, what can you do, right? Okay. Let me see who else we can get. All right, so the Lexus is probably the best tier four live racer out there right now. Any Lexus that has five stars, without the purple stars, it may not have as, as much advantage. It still has some, um, and it's going to run pretty close to its dyno, if not under, depending on how it's tuned. So it's a pretty good car to demonstrate what lobby you're in if you pick uh, the right opponent to race. So I'm just getting my lead here. And I just want to beat him by hair. Okay, that should be a 9.8 something on his part. Oh, no, 10.0, so not bad. So 10.0 on his part, 10.049 on my part. Um, again, I have a 9.8 dyno. And I'm capable of pushing the car a little bit faster than that, as you, as you um, know. With the bolide, you can beat dyno by about a tenth pretty easily with just shifting. So again, that's that's a 10.0 car in there. If this guy will race me, I may be able to give you a final um, feel for the lobby, but I, no, I guess not. Okay, uh, that's fine. So let's take one more guy because I do want to see if there are anybody uh, with a better tune that may actually show you the other end of the lobby because a well-set-up car with very high EVO and um, property slow down enough should be able to run 9.5 five to nine point four in here which will easily defeat me they may be able to get away with a nine point six without getting bumped but probably get bumped anything faster than that uh, so at this point we got a few more cars that came in this is a pretty good live racer as you know um, but it's a bit of a dyno beater so it's kind of hard to use to judge i'd rather race this guy gives me a better idea of the lobby okay um, 
<clears throat> I don't have this hard of a time getting races when I'm not recording, but when you are recording, well, you know, this is when people don't want to race you or you just can't find anybody and the clock is ticking. All right. All right, Gerald, unfortunately, it's going to have to be you. Um, Utopia, high EVO car, low performance point, set up properly, dino beater. Uh, not really dino beater, but lobby uh, advantage car. So who knows? He should run 9.9s in here, I would say, if he's set up right. Maybe 9.7 dino, 9.8 dino. The thing about the Utopia is that it's actually slightly better than the Bolide. Um, but, you know, the question is how much did he really set it up for? Not really. So 10.1 lobby, like I said, it's about a 10.1, 10.2 lobby. Uh, the Utopia without the probably missing some fusions and stuff. That's why it's not beating uh, the lobby on Vantage. Perfect example here. So 9.8 Dino, 10.1 lobby. You have advantage, you generally can do pretty well. So that's it. So out of the three, again, Lamborghini is too old. It's outdated. Um, the Salzburg, I, the problem with the Salzburg is you can upgrade it with less parts, uh, but it doesn't seem to carry lobby advantage. It seems to carry lobby advantage right at the 660s range in the, in the you know, 9.6 dyno range. And it can win. But it's not going to beat everything. So the Bolide, 9.8 dyno, carries advantage. Uh, same kind of deal. One point difference in the performance point. So theoretically, the two cars, if you play them a while and run them slow, if, like Bolide a little on the fast end, the Salzburg a little on the slow end, you can meet up in the same lobby. And the Salzburg in that situation may have an advantage. But as it stands, the Salzburg is one lobby up. Uh, from the Bolide, which is in 10-1. The Salzburg's more in like 9-9. So, you know, it's your pick of the two cars. Th so, if you were to have to pick, I would say pick the one you have more likely uh, capability to get the fusions filled up for. Both cars, unfortunately, really rely heavily on those stage sixes, but the Bolide relies on two in my tuning and setup versus the Salzburg, which actually relies on three. So there's another judgment call on your part. Without those stage sixes, neither car are as competitive even n compared to what they are now. Uh, but out of the two, I would say the Bolide would still be more competitive than uh, the Salzburg. So, all right, that kind of wraps up um, my review of these uh, race pass cars. Uh, if you had to pick one, uh, I would lean away from the Lamborghini and pick from the Porsche and uh, the Bugatti. And if you really wanted to have the best and easiest potentially to use in live in the long run, uh, neither one has easy fusions, but Porsche might be easier than Bugatti. Who knows? But bottom line is the Bugatti is a little better than the Porsche. So in my rankings, I would say Bugatti Bolide would be my top choice, followed by the Salzburg and I would pretty much avoid the Lamborghini um, but if you don't have the Lamborghini and you have the other two cars certainly pick it up it's not a terrible car it's just not very useful nowadays all right that wraps this video up uh, I'm going to show you the Bolide's parts and tune one last time before I uh, conclude everything so here's this part setup and here's the tune and my ship pattern may not be optimal either. I, you know, you play with the ship patterns. You may be able to squeeze more out of the car than I am. But in my situation, the idea here is to not run it too fast and just maintain a lobby that you eventually stabilize in where you can be competitive. So the Bolide, again, the winner of the trio here that is available. I hope you learned something useful from this video. And... I hope you like the video. If you do, please leave a like, spread it around, tell your friends. Uh, if you like my channel, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications when I put up these new videos. And as always, thank you for watching my videos. I'll catch you next time.